The Panasonic GH5 is becoming a popular camera for video shooters and indie filmmakers, and for a number of good reasons. So in this video, I want to show you the best settings to have so you can use this camera as a video camera. Right now I have some of those settings going. You can see I have audio bars here to display the audio input. I have a waveform monitor here for viewing luminance levels. Also for luminance, if I turn up the ISO here, I've got zebras telling me that it's way too bright. For focusing, I have, if I hit the function button here, it zooms in. zooms in on the picture, so helps me focus when I'm manually focusing. Then also helping with manual focus is peaking, so anything that's in focus is highlighted right now in a green. So I'm going to show you how to get those settings and then some other essential settings to really help you out and get shooting video with this. So let's get into that now. Right now let's reset everything so it's like you're using the camera straight from pulling it out of the box. Find the little reset. There it is. Let's just reset everything. Okay, looks like everything's reset. I'll even change it back on the dial mode here to how you get it right out of the box, which you see here it's on P. So the first thing you do want to do is change the dial mode to the creative video mode as, as PS. Panasonic calls it the creative video mode. It's the little image of a film camera with an M next to it. If you see here on the screen, it's a video camera with a P next to it. That's because it's that's the exposure mode it's in. So let's go into the creative video mode and go into the, the exposure mode. Right at the top, you're making it easy for us. Change that to M for manual. Another thing I really like to do first off when getting this camera ready is taking the ISO off auto because anytime you move the camera around, if it hits a lighter or darker area, it changes the, changes the luminance, and I really don't like it. I like to be in control of that, so I just get it off auto. Obviously, whatever, whatever level you want it at depends on how much light you have in your scene. So just have that. Now let's go to some other essential settings. Next one is SS slash gain operation, and it's set on SEC over ISO. We want to change that to angle over ISO. Essentially, we, this will be helping with the shutter angle, and it will be, you, we want it to be at 180 degrees, which it's not right now. So let's use this little dial here and get it to 180. So now anytime you change the frame rate, you're not going to have to worry about changing the shutter angle. It's always going to make the shutter angle half of whatever the frame rate is. Alright, so let's go back into the settings, go to another essential function, I think, which is adding a waveform. I think this just really helps with getting the lighting right. You can also add a waveform, or uh, you can also add a vector scope, which helps with, with getting the colors right. All right. So let's keep going down the line. Yep, that's everything for this tab. Let's go to the next one. Record format. These are all good choices. You can see anytime you cover the eyepiece, the monitor goes out here, it, it then pipes in through the eyepiece. This is a really annoying function, so we're definitely going to turn that off. But right now, we haven't got to that yet. Anyway, these are all good options, but the best ones, in my opinion, are MP4. Whoops. Are MP4 with LPCM in parentheses or MOV. These give you the most options as far as frame rate, and they work really well with, with really any any computer system. It's really annoying. <laughs> and I've worked with both a lot. They're both great formats to work with. So MOV, let's choose it. Now, uh, record quality. Here is really just whatever your preferences are, but because this thing shoots 4K and 10-bit 422, I figure why not? Let's shoot in that. So I have it set to that. So another essential, essential section, I think, is the photo style. I would get off any of these custom-made photo styles and go into really the ones that they've made for giving you a, a wider dynamic range and uh, wider color gamut to work with, which would be Cine-D and Cine-V. They also, for another $100, give you a log color profile, which gives you the widest range for working with colors, but that's an extra $100. So I think I will get that. I haven't yet, so right now I'll just leave it on Cine-D. 
Let's look at some other essential functions. Uh, looks like... Let's see... Mic level display, yes, let's turn that on. I wouldn't mess with mic adjustment. Mic level limiter, yeah, I'll turn that off. And yes, that's everything for that section. Okay, let's go to the next one. Exposure, extended ISO, I turn that on. What that does is when we go to ISO, before the bottom limit was 200, now we can go all the way down to 100. Okay, let's keep going, find some other settings we can change. For manual focusing, let's go to MF Assist. And I turn that onto this icon here with the picture of a lens and a button. So what this does is if you have a lens that communicates with the camera, if you change the focus, it will zoom in and help you and zoom in on the what you're focusing at and help you out. I have a manual lens on here that does not communicate with the camera. It's a vintage lens. So I have to hit this function three button and it zooms in for me and helps me out with focusing. Then you can also use these dials here to really fine tune and get in, get in close. So I'm about as close as I can get now. I think that's really helpful. Let's go back in the menu. And the next one down is MF Assist Display. And you can choose between picture and picture, which is how it was a minute ago, or full. And it just fully zooms in now when you hit that button. So it's really up to you what you want. I like the picture and picture. Okay, let's keep going. Let's turn, let's go to touch settings and I like to turn the touch tab off. Touch tab is this little tab here. I think it kind of just gets in the way and I, I don't really like the things that come up. We're also definitely gonna get rid of that. That's, uh, it changes from the monitor mode to the LVF here and it's just really annoying anytime your hand gets in the way. So definitely gotta get rid of that. We're just, just not there yet. Okay, so touch settings, touch tab, turn that off. Let's keep going down the line. Constant preview, turn that on. Peaking, let's turn that on. And I like to have that set at a color that can really show up. I, th I think the pink is really good. The green's also good, just as long as you're not shooting like a green screen or anything. Guidelines, I turn that on to thirds. Helps me you know, get, get the rule of thirds uh, kind of shot set up. Zebra pattern, I turn that on. I'll have that on zebra one, whoops, zebra one. And I'll set that to like, I like to have that around like 95, really close to getting to the top. Let's see. Okay, I think that's everything for that section. Let's go to the next one. Beeps, yeah, let's turn those off. Those are off. Headphone volume, that really depends on how, how you want it. Live view mode, let's turn that to 30 frames a second. So that'll look more like the frame rate that you'll be, that the video will look at, look like in the end. Okay, monitor display, nope. Eye sensor, okay, that's where we get rid of the, the automatic switching. So let's go into LVF over monitor switch and just turn it to monitor, which finally got rid of it. <laughs> now it just sticks on the monitor here. All right, let's keep going down. System frequency. If you're in the United States, have it on NTSC, or if you're in Europe or Asia, you want it on PAL. If you're only gonna be shooting at exactly 24 frames a second, you can use cinema, but I like to shoot in NTSC, it gives you some more frame rate options. And it looks like that is gonna be pretty much everything. Yep, that's everything, because these aren't really essential to video shooting. So I hope that's, that helps. Now you have your camera set up to be ready and shooting video. Thanks for watching, guys.